Hello friends, Namaskar, this is Sanjay. Welcome to the 15th video in this series and uh, the title of this video is Addressing the Needs of Children with Learning Difficulties, Impairments, etc. And this is the 15th chapter in the CTET CDP syllabus. And as usual, you will find uh, this video in both English and Hindi versions on our channel. In this video, we will cover only those topics which are important from your exam point of view. We'll start with understanding what is impairment, what is disability and what is a handicap. We'll also talk about the various types of uh, impairments and disabilities and the importance of inclusion. And we will also see what is the concept of inclusion. We will also cover some of the major types of uh, disabilities or impairments such as uh, visual, hearing and physical. And we will also talk about cognitive and intellectual disabilities. We will end this video with some sample questions from previous question papers. So let's get started. When we are studying pedagogy, impairment, disability and handicap are three words that we come across quite frequently. So what are these three words? What is their meaning and how are they connected with each other? An impairment can be a loss or an abnormality of psychological, physiological or anatomical structure or function of a part of the body. For example, if a child has some ear problems due to which the child cannot hear, then the child is said to have hearing impairment. Now, if there is no surgery or if there are no hearing aids that can correct this impairment, then this hearing impairment will become a hearing disability. And because of this disability, if the child is not able to perform some normal function which other children are able to perform. For example, if this child is not able to go to school, then the child is said to be handicapped. Similarly, when we are talking about a visual disability, impairment or handicap, if there are some problems with the child's eyes, for example, if the child has extreme short sight, then the child has visual impairment. And if there are no glasses and there is no surgery that can correct this visual impairment, then the child is said to be visually disabled. And if due to this visual disability, the child is not able to go to school, study, read and do other activities that the other children of the same age are able to do, then the child is said to be visually handicapped. The topic of this video is essentially a part of inclusive education. And if you want to get a deeper understanding of inclusive education from a theoretical part of point of view or from an implementation or a practical point of view, then there are three excellent books that you can refer to. The first one is the CBSE's Handbook of Inclusive Education and the other two are NCRT's guidebooks or handbooks on including children with special needs at a primary stage and upper primary stage. So these are two different books. And all these handbooks, the CBSC and NCRT handbooks talk about accessibility at a subject level. In a sense, how do we address these impairments or disabilities when we are teaching mathematics, when we are teaching science or EVS. And both of these uh, CBSC and NCRT handbooks talk about four main types of impairments or disabilities. That is visual impairment, hearing impairment, physical disabilities and cognitive and intellectual disabilities. And these are the four main types that are very important from your exam and syllabus point of view as well. Now, what is the importance of inclusion? Well, previously, there used to be separate schools for children with uh, disabilities. However, if you look at uh, the current uh, policies and the current uh, legal framework and the current education system in India, then all schools are inclusive schools. For example, if you look at uh, the RT Act, that is the Right to Education Act of 2009, then it says that all schools should provide access and barrier-free access to all children, including children with disability. Similarly, the Right of Persons with Disabilities Act of 2016 also says that uh, the system of teaching and learning should be suitably adapted to meet the learning needs of all types of students with disabilities. So, which means that it is a legal requirement that all schools should adapt their facilities and their curriculum and their teaching learning process to meet the requirements of children with disability. And even the national curriculum framework talks about the importance of inclusion. And this says that inclusion is a basic human right. It is not a privilege. It is a legal necessity. Next, let us talk about the concept of inclusion. So, 
द बेसिक एंड फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंक्लूजन इज दैट ऑल स्टूडेंट्स लर्न टूगेदर प्रीवियसली देर वॉज दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्पेशल स्कूल फॉर चिल्ड्रन हु आर डिफरेंटली एबल्ड बट नाउ ऑल चिल्ड्रन हैव टू स्टडी इन द सेम स्कूल दैट इज ऑल स्कूल आर इंक्लूसिव स्कूल सो दिस ऑल्सो मीन्स दैट ऑल टीचर्स शुड गेट रेगुलर ट्रेनिंग एंड द सपोर्ट दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू डेवलप देयर स्किल्स टू क्रिएट एंड मेंटेन एन इंक्लूसिव क्लासरूम and we should focus on the abilities rather than the disabilities of the children and we have also discussed previously that all children are different all learners are different therefore inclusion means that we also have to cater or support the individual learning styles of all the students and we have to honor the needs of all the students equitably that is when we talk about uh, equality we are giving the same kind of resources to all the students but that doesn't mean that all the students will be able to reach the same desired outcome or get the same result so when we talk about uh, equity we are giving the res- the resources or the support that is required by each of the students to make sure that they all reach the same desired outcome or the same desired results so we are focusing on the results or the outcomes rather than the process and we should celebrate diversity and individuality that is rather than expecting all the students in the classroom to behave similarly and all the students in the classroom to have similar abilities we should focus on the differences in the classroom the diversity in the classroom and the individuality that is brought in by each of the students and we should inculcate the sense of respect and empathy towards everyone so these are some of the basic concepts and the basic fundamentals of inclusion next let us look at uh, some of the important types of uh, disabilities or impairments from a syllabus point of view and see how we can support such students in our classroom so talking about uh, visual impairment we are referring to partial loss of vision that is low vision or complete loss of vision that is blindness so how can learning happen in the classroom in case of uh, children with low vision or blindness well the learning can happen through non visual modes so non visual modes are touch sound which is listening and smell and taste so we are using all the other senses to make the learning possible in the classroom so in case of touch we can use real and concrete materials which children can touch feel experience and in case of listening we should use detailed and descriptive script uh, instructions and uh, a greater use of uh, audio material so that learning can happen through listening and wherever possible even smell and taste should also be included in the teaching learning process and how can we make the classroom more inclusive for children with low vision and blindness well these are some important points because very frequently you will see questions based on these points so the first is reserving a seat in the front row so if the child is blind then making the child sit in the front row means that the child would be able to hear what the teacher is saying more clearly and in case of a child with uh, low vision then uh, sitting in the front row means that uh, the child would be able to see what is being written on the board or what the teacher is showing so this is the first point next proper lighting arrangements so in case of uh, children with low vision proper lighting bright lighting probably helps them to read whatever is uh, written on the board much more clearly and reading material with uh, large fonts and contrasting colors so if you change the settings on your phone or settings on your laptop or tablet to accessibility mode then you'll see that the fonts become larger and the colors also change to become more contrasting so that is because uh, it helps children with low vision to see the fonts and see what is written on the screen properly so similarly even reading material such as textbooks can use large fonts and contrasting colors wherever required and we should be able to provide basic equipment such as a magnifying glass wherever required and braille based reading material should also be made available wherever possible and we should also maximize the usage of tactile and audio teaching aids tactile in the sense uh, material which children can touch feel and experience and audio teaching aids should also be used wherever possible to make learning possible for children with low vision or blindness next we will talk about uh, hearing impairment so hearing impairment can mean partial hearing loss that is low hearing or it can mean total hearing loss that is uh, deafness now as you can see 
there are two sets of points that I have put on this slide. One is the use of other senses as a mediums of learning and making the classroom more inclusive. Now, you should read all these points and they are very simple points and they are based on common sense and you should remember some of these points because questions are based frequently on these points itself. Right? So, for example, how do you teach a child who has hearing impairment? Well, you have to use gestures, body language, expressions, lip reading, etc. so that the teacher can communicate with the child. And the teaching and learning material should be adapted in such a way that uh, more importance is given to the visual or the sight aspect. And uh, rather than just talking about theory, first-hand experience should be given more importance so that the child can experience what you are saying, the child can understand what you are talking about. Right? And uh, use of assistive devices such as uh, hearing aid and video captioning. Video captioning means uh, subtitles. So they should be used wherever possible. And uh, the child should also be taught how to access sound based information that the other children are able to access. For example, if the other children are listening to a story in the classroom, then how can the child who has hearing impairment listen to the story? He or she can't. So which means that the story has to be provided in a printed format or some sort of uh, audio captioning that is subtitles should be used so that uh, the child is able to follow the story along with the rest of the students. So that way the child should be encouraged and taught how to access the sound based information that the other children are accessing in the classroom. And uh, sign language training is also very useful so that uh, the child also can communicate better with uh, others. And then we'll talk about making the classroom more inclusive. So first is uh, the teacher and uh, the others who are involved in the teaching learning uh, activity should be aware of the learner's language abilities and learning style. Right? So that uh, the teacher should know whether uh, the child already knows sign language, which uh, language the child is comfortable with, what is the child's mother tongue and uh, to what extent the child can understand gestures. So by knowing all of these, the teacher will be able to better communicate with the child and ensure inclusion. And hearing impaired students who can lip read right, should be sitting in near the front of the classroom so that they can see the teacher's face and they can read lips and they can understand what he or she is trying to say. And uh, uh, instruction for the teacher is that when they are talking to a hearing impaired uh, learner, then they should face the student and use clear speech so that the child is able to read lips and pick up what the teacher is trying to say. And uh, of course, because we are talking about uh, lip reading here, the room must be well lit so that uh, the student can follow the facial expressions and the signs or the lips of the teacher and understand what the teacher is trying to say. So these are all points which are based on common sense. And these are the points which are going to be important on how to make sure that hearing impaired students or learners are also included in the teaching learning activities. Next, we'll talk about uh, physical disability such as a locomotor disability. Now, physical disability may mean partial or full loss of uh, various bodily functions. It can be walking, it can be speech, it can be fine motor skills, bladder control, hand movements, etc. So there are many different types of uh, physical disabilities that we can see among children in a classroom. So which means that we have to use the need specific approach. So if the child is unable to walk, then we have to use a different type of an approach. If the child is unable to speak, then we use a different approach. And if a child does not have fine motor skills, the child cannot hold a pen or a pencil or write properly, then we have to use a different approach. So that is using need specific approach. For example, if you are talking about a child who is in a wheelchair, then we have to make sure that the seating in the classroom is appropriate for a child who is in a wheelchair. or we can look at how a wheelchair itself can be parked in the classroom so that the child is an active part of the teaching learning process. And uh, even the desks and uh, the other facilities should be of uh, proper height and there should be adequate space so that even a child in a wheelchair can access all of these. And uh, if we are talking about uh, children who are unable to write because they have an issue with fine motor skills, in such cases, activities which require writing, drawing and other fine motor skills there should be alternatives for that so that the children are not left out. And uh, we can also look at how to make the classroom more inclusive for students or learners with physical disability. For example, alternative modes 
to support note taking if required because if the children cannot take notes right so there should be some alternative methods that they can use can they record the lecture on a or mobile phone or they can be provided with a pre-recorded lecture so that it can listen to it again and again and uh, they can understand it better without having to take notes so that way alternative modes and methods should be used wherever possible and uh, if children find it difficult to write right uh, you often find that they are more comfortable in using a computer because they can type or they can use a mouse to uh, manipulate things on the screen so computers may be used for better interaction interaction in case of uh, children with uh, a disability with uh, fine motor skills and uh, plus this is something which we have already discussed saying that the seating and the tables and the other facilities in the classroom should be provided such that uh, the children with the disability are able to function properly in the classroom and uh, wherever there is a test or an exam you will see that uh, writers are uh, provided for uh, people who cannot write and this is something that should be followed in the school as well so providing writers wherever required for written work is also very helpful and uh, as you see in many exams uh, for uh, people with uh, physical disability some additional time is also given wherever possible so that they can complete the assignments or the exams properly so these are some very basic points and these are based on again common sense and these are very important because the questions will be this based on these points itself so pause the video here and read all of these points at least two times next let us talk about some cognitive and intellectual disabilities so in the exam you'll be given these words like uh, dyslexia and you'll be asked if a child has dyslexia then what is the kind of problem that the child will face or what is the difficulty that the child has or you'll be given a statement like this about a specific difficulty or uh, a specific situation that the child is facing and you'll be asked what kind of disabilities does this child have so you should know the words and the meaning of these words so let's start with dyslexia here you have to focus on lexia lexia relates to reading so dyslexia means the difficulty in reading so the child is able to understand what you are telling him or her the child is able to speak properly but the child is unable to read not because of any visual issues right the child is able to see the letters but the child is not able to connect those written words with the words that he or she is speaking or hearing so difficulty in reading is dyslexia and dyscalculia is difficulty in mathematics it can be difficulty with numbers or difficulty with mathematical principles or process like addition subtraction so dyscalculia calculia you can remember calculator so dyscalculia means the difficulty with mathematics then dysgraphia so graph is where we draw or write so dysgraphia is the difficulty with writing it can be bad spelling or poor spelling or it can be poor handwriting or it can be the difficulty in writing what the child is thinking right so dysgraphia is difficulties with writing and then dyspraxia so dyspraxia affects the fine or the gross motor skills so fine motor skills are where we use the smaller muscles in the body so it can be writing or it can be painting and gross motor skills are where we use the larger muscles of the body it can be running jumping so a child with dyspraxia may have difficulty with fine motor skills or gross motor skills for example the child may be unable to write or draw or hold a pen properly or the child may not be able to run properly right or the child may have difficulty in planning and coordinating that is eye hand coordination for example if you throw a ball at a child who has dyspraxia then the child might not be able to catch a simple throw right whereas other children are able to so that is because of the lack of eye hand coordination so these are all symptoms of dyspraxia and then comes aphasia so these are two words aphasia and dysphasia that you have to remember aphasia means aphasia that is complete loss of speech and comprehension abilities the child cannot speak and dysphasia is the deficiency in the generation of speech language or sometimes also in comprehension so language re related uh, disabilities are aphasia that is complete loss of uh, speech and comprehension 
or dysphasia, which is a deficiency or partial loss of speech, language and comprehension. Moving on, these are also some of the cognitive and intellectual disabilities which are reasonably important because occasionally you will find questions on these as well. The first is auditory processing disorder. So auditory processing disorder, you know it is auditory. Auditory means sound. So the child is unable to process sound. That is the child is unable to understand sounds. So auditory sound visual processing disorder the child is not able to make sense of what he or she is seeing right it is not just limited to reading but beyond that the child is not able to understand the information that he is getting through his or her eyes so that is visual processing disorder next non verbal learning disabilities that is the child has a problem with motor skills or the child has visual spatial skills so the child is not able to think in 2d or 3d or the child has a very poor social skills and these are all because of some cognitive or intellectual disability. So there are plenty of non-verbal learning disabilities that uh, children may have which have different types of symptom symptoms. And then we have uh, something called ADHD which is also quite prevalent these days. So ADHD means Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So children with ADHD are hyperactive. So they cannot sit in one place, they cannot concentrate on any one thing, they constantly keep moving, they constantly keep doing things. So they have difficulty in paying attention. So if they are in the classroom, they cannot sit still in one place and they have difficulty in controlling their behavior. They can suddenly say something, they can suddenly throw something or they keep moving around. So they have difficulty in sitting still and controlling their behavior. So that is ADHD. And then we are talking about autism spectrum disorder that is ASD. Now it is called autism spectrum disorder because autism can be of various degrees. It can be mild, it can be severe. So there is a spectrum or a wide range of autism related disorders. So that is called autism spectrum disorder. So this is a developmental disorder that impairs the ability to communicate and interact that is the child is not able to communicate or interact with others properly. So that is autism spectrum disorder. And then there is hyperlexia. So hyperlexia means children can read very fast, right? but they are not able to understand what they are reading. They can say the sounds that the words mean, but they can't understand the meaning of those words because their speech or their thoughts have not caught up with their uh, reading speed. So they can read very fast, hyperlexia, but they cannot understand what they have read. So these are some of the other types of cognitive and intellectual disabilities that you may see in the exam occasionally. Next, let us solve some uh, sample questions from previous question papers. The first question is, dyslexia is associated with which of the following? So dyslexia is not mathematical disorder because that is dyscalculia. It is not behavioral disorder. It is not a mental disorder. Dyslexia is a reading disorder because a child who has dyslexia will not be able to read properly. So dyslexia is a reading disorder. The best way, especially at a primary level to address the learning difficulty of students is to use which of the following. Now we discussed that there can be different types of disabilities that learners may have and we have to use the most appropriate or the most suitable method to address that type of difficulty or that type of disability. So here storytelling method is good, right? but it is just one approach. Then easy and interesting textbooks is also a good approach and expensive and glossy support material is not ideal, right? not required. So here depending on the type of disability or difficulty that the child has, a variety of teaching methods that are suited for the disability must be used. So it can be storytelling method, it can be easy and interesting textbooks and it can be good support material, not necessarily expensive or glossy, but good support material. So depending on the type of learning difficulty, a variety of teaching methods and approaches can be used to address that specific situation. Orthopedically impaired children are likely to have which of the following kind of difficulty or disability. Now. What is orthopedics? Orthopedics is to do with uh, bones or muscles. Therefore, a child 
who is orthopedically impaired means that the child is not able to do things physically right so it might be fine motor skills or gross motor skills that are affected so fine motor skills are like writing or drawing or other activities which require smaller muscles which require fingers right? whereas uh, uh, gross motor skills require the bigger muscles such as running or jumping so if a child is orthopedically impaired the child is not having difficulty with mathematics so it is not dyscalculia it cannot be difficulty with the reading so it is not dyslexia it is dysgraphia because graph is writing and writing requires fine motor skills and orthopedically impaired children may have difficulty in writing because they have an issue with muscles or with bones so the answer is dysgraphia and this thymia is not something that we have discussed here so you can ignore this so you have to remember these three important ones dyscalculia dyslexia and dysgraphia a child's notebook shows errors in writing like reverse images or mirror imaging etc the child is showing signs of which of the following now here the child is writing but the child is facing issues with this writing the child is writing reverse or mirror images so which means that the child has dysgraphia so dysgraphia is not a learning disadvantage it is not a learning difficulty it is not called learning problem dysgraphia is called a learning disability therefore answer option 2 is the correct answer here a child who can see partially what is the kind of approach that we should take with such a child we discussed that uh, when we are talking about visual impairment it can be low vision or complete loss of vision so here we are talking about a child who can see partially so now the first option is child should be put in a regular school which is correct because all schools are inclusive schools and all children irrespective of their ability or disability should get an opportunity to study in all schools so a child who can see partially should be put in a regular school with no special provisions this is not correct because the child has a difficulty in seeing therefore the teaching learning methodology or the facilities in the school should make some special provisions or allowances for the child who can see partially therefore regular school is correct no special provisions is incorrect so we'll eliminate this should not be given education since it is of no use to him you know that this is a wrong statement and needs to be put in a separate institution as i have discussed several times previously there used to be special schools for uh, disabled children but now all schools are inclusive schools therefore there is no need to put children into a separate institution the last one says should be put in a regular school correct while making special provisions this is also correct which means that the facilities and the teaching learning methodology that is used should be adapted to meet the needs of this child who can see partially so option 4 is the correct answer and uh, with that we come to the end of this video if you have any questions or feedback please put them in the comment section below and uh, i will see you again very soon in uh, the next video in the series and uh, we will look at the next topic in the syllabus so till then take care stay safe